Hello friends, this is Tig again with another reaction video. And today we're going to be doing a reaction on Nicki Minaj Get Arrested. Now this is Fox Soul, never heard of it before. I was on Nate the Lawyer, uh, I watched a tiny bit of that. I was thinking about doing a reaction to his first. But I decided to go ahead and see if I can find more on this particular subject. Now they're going to be talking about uh, Nicki, Min Nicki Minaj arrest. She had, uh, allegedly had drugs in her uh, bag. And basically, she claimed that it wasn't hers and that uh, it was her bodyguard. <laughs> All right. You know, I've been talking about squealing, right? You know, black people love to talk about, oh, I never squeal. I would never squeal. That's kind of squealing right there, right? You just blaming somebody else for it, right? Let's just say it was his. And why are you carrying it in your luggage? I didn't, I didn't know that it was a requirement for the performer to carry somebody else's drugs. You know what I'm saying? Especially a bodyguard. Now, if it was a friend, maybe that would have been believable. But your bodyguard, you carrying his stuff? Uh, it's just crazy. Anyway, the reason why I wanted to go ahead and do a reaction to this is because, I mean, that is um, big news that she did get arrested. I mean, she's not arrested now. But that is big news that she did get hit at an airport. I think it was Amsterdam. But I just want to see how much they're going to try to defend her. Because I think she did an interview stating that they targeted her because of who she was. Like, you know, her color and the fact that she's a black female kind of a thing. So I know, I feel like that's, that's bogus. I think it's crazy. I think it's stupid. Is it possible that these people might've been racist? Yeah, it's always a possibility. But guess what? If you white and you got all these drugs in your bag and you trying to uh, uh, push it through the airport and they catch you, trust me, you going to jail too. I don't care what color you are. I don't care who, 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 I mean, it might matter who you are. Now, if you like some kind of uh, really important billionaire, they might they might let it slide. But then again, you would never get caught at the airport because you're on your private jet, which is interesting that they never check these people. But it, anyway, either case uh i want to see if these black people and i'm assuming all of them black they look black but you know sometimes you can get confused a bit uh, uh with uh black people and hispanics okay because you know but i'm assuming they are black uh, uh, uh and i want to see if they defend Nicki minaj and go with her excuse of they targeted her because of who she was and her race okay so let's go ahead and get started but before we do please like subscribe and share this video and don't forget to hit that notification bell that way you know whenever we come out with new videos okay all right let's get with it all right let's get to these topics uh nikki minaj was forced to postpone her concert in manchester england due to being detained at an Amsterdam airport for allegedly carrying marijuana in her luggage. Take a look. Uh, they did a, just a random a quick check, but now they want to open Why? it. And first of all, because you filmed him and he was like- Because I filmed bit, him? Yeah, he was like, uh, he, do, he doesn't believe you that you don't have more with you than you said. All right, airport security allegedly found pre-rolls in her luggage, which Nikki claims belonged to her security. Do you think celebrities need to stop thinking they are above the law? And Matt, I'm going to go to you first on this one. What do you think? Well, y'all already know that Nicki Minaj is my good Judy. So, you know, I'm not going to, you know. But I will say this, uh, being Black and also being uh, outside of the, the country, you do have to abide by the rules. However, those pre-rolls belong to her security and they and they said allegedly because she said it wasn't her that doesn't make it necessarily not hers. It was in her bag allegedly. Okay, so the fact that you know it, it's it's the fact that she just threw him under the bus. And if I was a him, I would quit after that. I mean, like not unless he accepted all that and say, look, you know, you can throw me on the bus anytime you feel like it, which is insane, right? Because he's a security officer. And I, I have a feeling he's not getting paid that much money to be thrown on the bus like that because he could have went to jail over this. And somehow I get the feeling she expected him to go to jail over this, to get some kind of felony charge. I mean, come on, man. I mean, I, I worked in security before that. Ain't no way in the way I'm going to jail for you because of what you did and, and, and the poor choices that you made. That's insane. And the way this woman is saying it, almost like she just 
believe what Nicki Minaj said. Like it was fact. She don't know if that was really his, his, um, the security officer's drugs. She don't know this, but she just going by this woman's word. I mean, it's crazy. And that they were, you know, that was their pre-rolls. As far as me and mine, I'm not going to even tell you a lie, Claudia. When I go to LA, when I come out to LA, I, I usually buy those little pins mm -hmm. and I travel with those pins everywhere. Mm -hmm. So I've been outside of the country and I've had those little pins and little things in my purse. And I didn't, I wasn't even thinking about it, but to see someone on the level of Nicki Minaj, you know, get stopped and frisked and, you know, told that they can't do that. I'm definitely going to now, now I'm going to be more careful than ever. You're supposed to be. I mean, you got to be conscious on what you bring at an airport. It's like, you know what I mean? You pretty much putting everything bare out there because they got like x-ray machines and they physically look into your bags, right? I remember I brought some type of lotion or whatever and they basically told me I couldn't bring it on the plane. You know, I don't know if you can do it now, but I mean, at the time, you know, they ch make, sh make sure you take off your shoes and everything. They check you like crazy. So why wouldn't you double check it? Matter of fact, there's an island. I forgot uh, St. Croix or one of them islands. I forgot the name of the island. But if you got caught with um, ammunition in your freaking bag, that's automatic 12 years, man. 12 years. It's like so far three people, three Americans, I believe, got caught. One, one was a black female. After that, after that. Now, I knew better before that. But after that, you know you're going to double check your bag now. When you travel to another country, you just can't just be doing stuff these days. Right. And it's insane that these freaking, uh, musicians and stuff like that think they're immune to these checks. Look, you got to be one of those billionaires, and you know, one of them high places with your own private jet. Then you pretty much probably bring anything you want to on your plane. Obviously, if you remember that, that rich, uh, finance dude who had young girls on his plane, and everybody else. So obviously you can get away with that kind of stuff. Not forever, but obviously nobody's checking. You know, they might have logs or whatever, but I'm just saying, man, you probably have a better chance of getting away with bringing that stuff on your plane if you have a private jet compared to if you had a freaking airport, which is insane. And these people are supposed to be rolling, which is very interesting that they're still flying in uh, regular uh, planes and stuff, man. But they always trying to put out there like they just rolling like that. So it's like, why aren't you using a private jet? So she basically, from my understanding, blamed her bodyguard. Pretty much pretend like it wasn't hers. Uh, thought complained about you know it was it was because of her color, and she's a black female and all this other stuff, man, which is bogus, which is crazy stuff. But the fact that this lady just saying that, oh, now I'm going to check for. You're supposed to always check to make sure you don't got nothing that, that that can throw you in jail, okay? If you got the habit of smoking these, you know, funny cigarettes, right? You need to make sure you ain't bringing nothing with you. Double check your bag. Why are you checking for things that might be missing? Check for things that you might be bringing accidentally. Personally speaking, if I was one of those people smoking that kind of stuff, I would never put it in my bag. Never. Never have it in your car either. If you get into an accident and somehow the uh, the police start to question you and they feel like they need to check your vehicle, they will find it. They will find it. And people like to stick stuff like that into their glove department or there are beers in there, like on the, on, on the, um, you know, that little department in, in the door <laughs> and they'll just have all kinds of stuff all up in there, all kind of evidence all up in there. And the cops know you will. That's why they checking, man, because they know a lot of people out there like Nicki Minaj is going to stack 32 wrapped uh, uh, smoking items in her freaking bag like crazy. And from, from, my under, from my understanding, Amsterdam you, is legal to smoke. I mean, they got like uh, these brownies, man. They got drugs and all kind of junk, right? But you can't transport it for whatever reason. I don't care if it's for medicinal purposes you still can't take it on the plane and go somewhere else with it that's where they stop that's when you like they consider you trans because they don't know what you're going to do with it they don't know so you can say i'm i'm the only person smoking it but your word means nothing to these people nothing and like i said i don't know if amsterdam races or not you know what i'm saying i have no clue 
You know what I'm saying? But I know this, whatever country that I go to, it's best not to have these things in your bag. It, it, it is scary. I had those pens too. I got them in New York and I went to Ruba. It's like, but I don't know. I made sure to like exhaust all of them and not bring them back in. Cause like I got them out, but I don't want to like, I don't know. I just feel like we don't, there's certain things we just shouldn't be taking chance on anymore. And I don't understand going to Amsterdam where that's the weed capital. Like you're going to get a whole bunch over there anyways. You know what I mean? Al, what do you think about this? Um, well, she, like I say, even though it's a weed capital, that doesn't mean you can do whatever you want. And Nicki Minaj want to do whatever she want because she feel like she's above it all. Just like a lot of these Hollywood people feel like they can just do whatever they want. It's, it's, I remember Johnny Depp and Amber Heard, you know, it was illegal bringing dolls into, I don't know if it was Australia or whatever it was, right? But she did it anyway. And they got in trouble for it. And it's like they could just feel like they could do whatever they want to, man. And thinking the laws is not going to come after them. But it do, and they starting to learn that. You know what I mean? And, and and it happened to a few celebrities when they thought they could get away with stuff like that, and they got caught. But then a lot of the times, they don't spend a lot of time in jail, because I don't, I don't think Nikki's probably even spent a day in jail. Uh, and plus, they can pay the fine, because they got money. You know, but look, make the kind of money you want, get on a private uh, jet. You probably could do anything you want to at that point. Uh, with a private plane. I mean, I don't know what the regulations are with plane. I don't know if they really check planes or what uh, these private jets, but you know, I think you probably get away with more than you could on a regular uh, flight. Um, yeah, I definitely think that that celebrities have to follow the law because if not, you end up in a slammer the same way Nicki Minaj ended up. I think the interesting thing here is soft drugs are like cannabis and psychedelic mushrooms. And in her case, it's legal to have it and to travel with it as long as it's not more than five grams. And she actually had 30 to 100 grams, which put her way outside of the limits that were allowed in the country of the Netherlands in the city of Amsterdam. Um, but you know what I found so interesting about this whole thing is Nicki Minaj knows exactly what she's doing because she knew to go live with this particular arrest because she knew it was going to ignite her fans to like engage and to get involved. And that is exactly what they did. They showed up at the police precinct and, and, and for, you know, like, like pretty much protest until she was released. They showed up at her hotel to show her love. I have never seen this type of fan engagement or being able to reach out and connect to her fans and get this type of response since Michael Jackson. That's a bad thing. Cause you bringing them into something that they could get hurt. And you know, the, the cops ain't going to let you go because of fans. They let her go because they probably, you know, she paid a fine or whatever and they released her. It ain't nothing to do with the fans. She can rally the fans all she want. And just, if, if anything, it might help her record sales or whatever the situation is, but it's not going to deter the law. They're going to do what they're going to do regardless. They don't care if it's a bunch of fans out there, you know, and complaining about her color and all this other stuff. They don't care. And another thing I don't understand is why would you badmouth the country? Most likely you're probably going to return to because drugs are legal in that country. And obviously, uh, from my, from my understanding, I think maybe I'm wrong. She, she smokes, <laughs> you know, allegedly she smokes, uh, you would think you would want to go back there, but to walk around talking about how racist, uh, Amsterdam is and everything else, they might not want you back. And you might want to make some money while you go there too as well with your concerts. And yet you want to go to all these countries when they don't treat you well, they, you call them racist. They'd be like, well, we don't want you in our country then. Don't come back. Why would you go to a racist country? If you, be if you believe this country is full of racists, why would you go? And you can use that excuse. Well, she there to do a concert to make money. Fine. But, you know, it's like, well, why would you want to entertain a bunch of racist people? It doesn't make any sense, man. You know, but yet, you know, when, th when things don't go their way and they don't like it, that's the first thing they pull out, the race card, the race card. I just think it's one of the most f fascinating things to witness in this in the 21st century. Really? But Al, I, do think, I do think that in this day and time, as as celebrities, even as just as regular people, when you come and encounter with the, the police, I think that it it is imperative that you go live because mm -hmm. you, you don't know what's going to happen. Mm -hmm. Right, true. We have some comments. Now, I do agree with that, though. When you're dealing with the police, you might want to pull out your phone, man.
because you don't know what they're gonna get you on. I thought it was crazy that country with the you know filing um uh, 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 bullets in your in your um in your bag you get automatic twelve years. I mean, like why? I mean, if you can prove this person is a is a is a, is a uh, outstanding citizen and they made an error, why would you automatically give them twelve years? I mean, I get it if you if you're trying to stop drug trafficking and all gun trafficking and all these other things, right? For well-known criminals, I understand you giving them twelve years or, or so, but people that just made an honest mistake or whatever, man, I just don't understand the twelve years thing, man. But you really got to be careful when it comes down to the law these days. As much as I l- love, uh, God created the police, God created government, God created these things to help the people, but it's so often being used against the people that it's it's just you just got to be careful about the stuff. All right, Th- those three were pretty reasonable. I really expected them to take uh, Nicki Minaj's side in this, uh, but they seem pretty reasonable about the situation that you need to be careful when you're going on a plane because they check everything. I mean, you need to check your jacket. You need to check your bags. You need to check everything, man. <laughs> Find out what the rules are in the country that you're going to and what you get away with and what you can't. And you would think that like people like Nicki Minaj will have advisors or people that check for these things, you know, check the law and all that kind of stuff to see what they can get away with. When I went to Germany, I I went through this, one of those, um, you could say boot camp, as they say, on what to do and what not to do while you're in their country, man. So you won't go to jail. So, but I guess they just don't care. So they're going to do whatever they want to. All right. But I decided to go ahead and switch over to this. I wanted to watch, uh, uh, this clip, uh, it's called Face Off. It's also on Fox Soul. And this is from Nate the Lawyer uh, uh, video. So I'm going to just try to get little snippets of this in particular. Now, I'm not going to really uh, cover what Nate the Lawyer say about it. I love watching Nate the Lawyer. I think he's great. He's fantastic. I love watching the stuff. And he's a lawyer, too. So he knows the ins and outs when it comes down to the law uh, when it on a lot of these subjects. So I think it's fine and interesting. But what I think I found more interesting is these guys debating, okay? Uh, this guy obviously is against what the things Nicki Minaj said. And this guy, I ain't going to say he's for what Nicki Minaj said, but I think he's going to defend her in some way, okay? So let's go ahead and get started and see what they got to say. How was Nicki Minaj blaming the fact that she was in, uh, a member of a confident other race? Not only that, but just knowing that something is being done to you on purpose simply because you are a confident other race. For being arrested in the Netherlands by the Dutch military police for having dozens of pre-rolled marijuana cigarettes in her luggage. Now, this is Nikki who likes to throw the race card. People will remember that she tried to falsely accuse her husband's rape victim of being white, an African-American woman. She was quoted as saying in an interview, that, well, you know, white is right. Something that he was wrongfully accused of doing when he was 15 years old. Well, because he didn't have $7,000 to get himself bailed out. Because when you're in the hood at 15, you don't have that kind of money, and neither does your family. And when the alleged accuser wrote a, a, a letter to the judge asking to take it, take the, recant these statements, she was told that she would go to jail for 90 days, allegedly, if she recants the statement. But white is right. All right, from my understanding, Nicki Minaj's husband is a career criminal, basically, right? The guy got arrested so many times. He got so many, uh, he got so many mug shots. <laughs> that is funny. It, it doesn't really make any sense why a woman that's trying to be famous who probably can get a, a, a normal dude the first thing to go for is the guys that got the worst backgrounds the worst background it never made sense and it's just it's just quite as a black man it made me question some black women for making these type of choices when they choosing thugs and these certain type of guys that's um uh they, they get them pregnant and they become baby mamas from these guys. And then they complain about it. And then they blame all black men over these choices. Just like that that mayor in Fenton County, whatever, the one that uh, the super mayor doing all that crazy stuff that she's doing, right? And she had one, one of her advisors or somebody that worked for her is a pedo. What is it about these women and these questionable men that they love to be involved with? 
what is it? And then they wonder why they get all these problems, man. Cause they go for the most criminal of criminals, not minor stuff. Like the guy stole from a store or something like that. We talking about, you know, the R word and, and gun charges and people, guys being pedos and all kind of junk. These are the kind of people they involved with. And then she, she want people to believe that those, those, uh, those cigarettes or whatever that was in her allegedly in her bag wasn't hers, but these are the type of people she's involved with. It's crazy, man. It's crazy. And I think what's more crazy is her fans believe her. They believe her. And most likely it's probably more women than anything else, but I'm sure men in there too, but it's probably more women because it's like, they can just do all kind of ratchet stuff, man. And people just be defending them. And all they got to do is play the race card. And all of a sudden everything's all right. It's crazy stuff, man. You know, and I know from experience, because I, I grew up uh, uh, around predominantly uh, black people, black neighborhoods. So I'd seen it all, man. I've seen, I probably, I'm sure there's some things I haven't seen over the years, over the later years, but I've seen a lot of it to know that it, it's like people are ready to believe these type people, even though they know that they involved with so many crazy things. The thing with the super mayor is like phenomenal that people still defend that woman after all this crap that came out on her. Crazy stuff, crazy. Suggesting that she fabricated the allegations against her husband who was not guilty of the sexual assault that he was very much guilty of. Also the Nicki Minaj who defended her brother against allegations of the fact that he an 11 year old and now he's spending d decades in prison for that five o'clock the brother of rap star Nicki minaj convicted of sexually assaulting a young girl inside his home on long island that verdict coming down late this afternoon a judge has sentenced jelani miraj in court and jelani miraj is Nicki minaj's brother mm -hmm. uh he was sentenced to 25 years to life in prison following the guilty verdict in his child trial so What's up with these women, man? It's like everybody they involved with, man, just doing all kind of criminal activities, man. And we ain't just talking, like I said, we ain't talking about the small stuff either. We talking about big time criminal activities. I mean, when you go to the projects, man, you can, you know, a lot of these uh, baby mamas and all that kind of stuff, they get involved with these thugs. And also they overlook the fact that these guys are doing all kind of criminal activity. And we talking about with the big M word too as well, right? When they taking out other people and they still defending these jokers, man. Only time they don't defend them is when these guys dog them out. Like that's not coming. Okay. Like they don't know that's coming, right? They be all supportive, ride and die with you and everything else when they doing it to other people and robbing people and everything else. But as soon as them, them jokers turn around, which they always do, and then do it to them, that's all of a sudden they ain't no good N-word. And it's all black men. I'm like, how can you believe anything this woman says? If nothing else, she got terrible judgment. She can't control how um, she deal with her brother. She love her brother. I'm not holding that against her, despite what he does, right? But to go on, to go on uh, radio shows or whatever, interviews, to try to defend this joker, she defended everybody in her life to doing all this criminal activity and they always guilty every time her husband, how many times he got prosecuted, <laughs> but she going to defend this guy to the hilt because it's a reflection on her because of course she got great judgment, great judgment, <laughs> you know, just like bringing drugs on a plane kind of judgment. <laughs> okay. But the Dutch military police, they clapped back. They, they had, they called it annoying that she threw that card. But this is just another example of someone who got caught red-handed breaking the law, who feels like they're above the law, feels like they're entitled to do whatever they want, being a crybaby about what? She spent about four and a half hours in custody and paid a $350 fine for something she could have had a much more serious consequence with, for something she could have been locked up in jail for. But instead, this woman trying to import drugs illegally is just being a crybaby and saying, oh, no, no, it's my skin color. Absolute nonsense, Quano. All right, you heard his side, and I totally agree with him, man. She got caught red-handed, 
and she and she basically tried to throw this other guy under the bus. The, uh, like I say, maybe this is the reason why they they hang around criminals all the time, right? So whenever things go bad, they have a guinea pig, a go-to person they can just throw all the charges on. Sort of like what people are accusing Diddy of doing, right? That people are taking falls for him, like that that situation in the club when he pulled out a weapon that he somebody else took the fall for it. There's, at least that's that's the rumor, okay? I'm not exactly sure if that's true. It's alleged, okay? But they have these guys and that there's, there's willing to that they've been in jail for like countless of offenses and all this kind of stuff. So they have these people around them. So when things go bad, either these people are gonna do everything they can to defend them, or they'll take the fall. Maybe that's the way things are. Maybe that's the reason why they always hanging around criminals 24 hours a day. She can just throw her uh, security guard under the bus because nobody heard anything he had to say about it. I haven't heard anything. If you heard anything from the security officer that Nicki Minaj blamed, please leave it in the comments. Let me know because I would have quit. I don't care. Matter of fact, I wouldn't have worked for her in the first place because you, we, we, when you come down to defending rappers and stuff like that, man, you can get in all kind of trouble, even lose your life. You know what I mean? The situation with um, Megan Thee Stallion when she got, you know, harmed in the foot kind of situation, right? I think it was a little bit of rumors at the time they were trying to blame the other person in the car so they can avoid going to jail. And I'm like, these people are willing to go to jail for these folks. I'm like, this is crazy, man. This is insane. That's what it takes to get a job with these people. Never, never, okay? Never. All right, but now we just heard from the the, the white guy on this show. And like I said, I do agree with everything he said, basically. Now, let's see what the black guy got to say. I'm hoping that he's going to make some sense, but I get the feeling he's going to defend her. He just looked like the type that would defend her in all the craziness, okay? So let's go ahead and hear it. Dutch police. I don't believe that Sister Nikki Minaj was attempting to import drugs. I believe that the marijuana that was found is obviously was for personal consumption for whoever. What that got to do with it? She had 32 rolls and thing. He tried to. You think she didn't understand what the law was? Obviously, it's illegal to do it. I don't get what she's using it for. And you can't. You can't assume a person's intent. You don't know the reason why they do it. Maybe she wanted to give it to her family members. Who knows? Either way it goes, it's against the law. I can't believe this guy even said that. Ever it was that was using it. That's, that's, but now, that's bringing I drugs with her somewhere she up, can't bring him. But you brought up about her brother. You brought up about her ex-husband, etc. Well, she but seems so like what took children. place right here in the Netherlands. Okay. It's obvious you have not done your research about the Dutch's mistreatment of black people. The Dutch went all throughout Africa for over 160 years, colonizing many different African nations. And, then and here we go. <laughs> all right. He had to go hundreds and hundreds of years to make a point. I mean, come on, man. Is that what we do now? So when a cop stopped me, I, I'm going to talk about slavery back in the 18-something. Is that how things go now, you know? That's usually You're still going to jail, regardless. You know, look, we're going to blame everybody for slavery. Everybody, at some point, even black people, had slaves. So we're going to start blaming everybody. Oh, yeah, okay. She she got busted at the, the airport for having drugs in her, in her uh, allegedly having drugs in her bag. But has something to do with Amsterdam had like slaves back in the day. What that got to do? Is that the argument? Is that the best he could come up with? And I'm so curious as to see what else he has to say. Enslaving Africans and did not allow them to go into the Netherlands. And if you do research about the Netherlands right now and their treatment of black people and African immigrants, the racism, Ray Charles can see it. This black woman said that she felt that her race played a role. Now, her past comments about her ex-husband, her ex-brother, her brother was in prison. That ain't got a damn thing to do about. Neither do you bringing up the answer they had slave back in the day. They had nothing to do with it either. And yet you brought up the past. This particular incident, she experienced it. She lived it. And she has a right to speak her mind about what she personally went through. The Yeah. She, she, she can go on any radio station and any interview and and say whatever she wants. But the fact of the matter is that gonna change the law. And guess what? When she if she ever go back to Amsterdam, she ain't gonna um do that again because she knows she's gonna get arrested.
And now she probably flagged for trying to do it. Cause somehow when you get in trouble at the airport or whatever, for doing things like this, somehow I feel like they keep a record of that stuff. I mean, not just, you know, one of those things where they keep an eye out seeing what other stuff you might be doing in that country. Cause you just got caught. So all of a sudden now they probably wondering, well, next time, or they probably giving instruction next time she come in that country, keep an eye on her now. So she really want to run around trying to pretend like she had nothing to do with that because now when she go to that country again, which most likely she will, uh, now she's going to feel like they're going to be watching her down. She can't have the kind of fun she always wanted to have, you know what I mean? Or what ha- what have you. But either way it goes, man. I mean, like, come on. Dutch has always been brutal, disrespectful, and hateful toward black people. This doesn't surprise me. This is so, so it's inappropriate for me to talk about her falsely throwing a race card in the past, in the recent past, about trying to say this black victim of her husband was white. So that you call that irresponsible, but you bring up conduct from two or three hundred years ago. To remind you white folks. No, no. Who to- <laughs> this guy, man, got no argument none and i would love to call this man a genius but that was an easy argument for him man he just setting up good arguments man this guy how do you get a show can i get a show can i get a show because i would have made a better argument <laughs> i mean this guy going to get uh, trampled by this dude man right it's crazy what a what a point he just made with that just like i said man you gonna break up uh hundreds of hundreds of years ago about slavery, but I can't break up what the woman did last month. <laughs> oh, that's so crazy, man. But they always got to push that race card. See how, he, how adamant he is? And he's going to double down on it, I bet. He's just going to double down on it. He know he wrong, but instead of just saying, well, you're right, man, and conceded, but he, he going to double down on it. To pretend be, like your history is irrelevant and immaterial. Just to if be We celebrate in America. Yeah. We celebrate America. It's called President's Day. <laughs> this guy is something else. Why can't they just hire people, man, that can look at both sides? I get it that they supposed to, you know, debate on certain subjects, man. But you would think this guy would bring up something more logical than that. Instead of just going to that easy go to thing. Oh, yeah, they racist. That's enough. That should explain everything. There's nothing else to explain. Nothing. The fact that she threw her bodyguard under the bus. The fact that she got the stuff allegedly in her in her suitcases. Forget all that, man. We gonna go for back in the day, Amsterdam has lanes. Let's go there. And so they so terrible. They hate black people. So what they should have done, I guess according to this dude, right? They should have found the drugs, and they should have just let her go. But you know, wag the finger. That's naughty. We got laws against it. Make sure you don't do it again. Oh, well, let's treat her exactly like we treat everybody else who got drugs in their bags. This guy has no argument. I mean, none. No argument, right? And I would continue to try to figure out what this guy, what points he's going to make, but he already led with the race car thing. And once they start off there, then it's nonsense after that. You can't go anywhere logical. All of a sudden, you just you just arguing just to argue now. And as soon as he do that, if he would have came up with some kind of really logical point, then this would be more interesting, a more uh, a better debate. But as soon as he went there, went a hundred years back, talking about people owning slaves and stuff, man, he lost me there. He lost me. From that point on, the argument is going downhill. From that point on, it's just not going to work. He has no excuse. Nikki has no excuse. If I was a security officer, I would quit. <laughs> I mean, it's crazy, you know. I'm telling you, man. You 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 have to be careful of what what kind of people you hang around with. These toxic people, you're just gonna get in trouble all the time, and then they're gonna throw you under the bus as soon as they're able to do it to try to avoid prosecution. Fortunate for this guy that th- those police officers didn't believe her and threw her tail in jail. But if I was that guy after I landed in America, I would have been like handing her all the keys and everything else that I got and say, I quit. I am not going to work for you anymore. If you was intelligent, but for some reason, these guys continue to do it. I can't imagine why a guy, 
allegedly would cop to something that's going on with, with Diddy and put himself going to jail for it. I mean, what did, what did he allegedly promise this dude? <laughs> I'm like, I just can't picture it, man. I can't do it. Yeah, man. But you know, some people just love, look, I know that it's exciting because back in the day, I knew a couple of guys that did drugs. I was a kid back then. I understood that. I really didn't have a, a lot to lose. When I say kid, I was like in my early, like my like 18 and up. Okay. And that's an adult actually. But you know, I was learning life and you know, I was taught the black thing where you're supposed to, you know, defend, you know, uh, criminals because everybody else was against us. The police against us, white people against us, the whole nation against us. So we got to protect our own. You know, that's what I was taught. You know, don't matter. The fact is these friends of mine were throwing me under the bus whenever they had a chance or lying constantly and doing all kind of junk to get us in trouble. Cause I remember I was hanging out with these guys, right? And every time we went out, we get, we got into fights. And I couldn't figure it out because I wasn't starting to fight. I went to the club to pick up girls, to dance, drink, and pick up women. That was my goal. That's all I wanted to do. But for some reason, ever since I was hanging with these dudes, we got into fights. Then I found out that these guys had beef with these other guys, so they would stop fights every time we was in the club. After I found that out, I said, you know what, forget this. I stopped hanging with these dudes, man. I'm like, you know what? And then after a while, it took a little bit. But after a while, as I got a little older, I started to realize these people are toxic. And after a while, they're going to throw me under the bus. Because it was a couple of times it came close to them throwing me under the bus, man, really. So I was like, you know what? I'm not hanging with people like this anymore. This is before I was saved, okay? But God gave me enough wisdom to start to realize that, okay? So I was like, oh, no, nah, man. I'm not hanging with these people no more. And I will never hang with people like that. They really have to fool me. In order to get me like that. You know. They really have to fool me. But if I already know you doing dirt. That you lying on your girlfriend. That you selling stuff that you shouldn't be. And doing all kind of stuff. And and, and, and and breaking the law every chance you get. Ain't no way in the world I'm hanging out with you. Because as soon as you get in trouble. And if you think you can pin it on me. You will. <laughs> I'm not going down for you buddy. Not doing it. All right. But Nikki got what she deserved. Probably she deserved more, but she at least did a little bit of time. Don't believe her. I really don't. She really don't got the kind, as far as my opinion goes, she don't got the track record for it. Now, do I wish harm on Nicki Minaj? No, not at all. Not at all. Do I wish she spent all her life in jail or whatever? No, none of that stuff, man. But if you break the law, they're going to come for you. Basics. Basics. As a black person, you should realize that. I don't care how much you hate the police. I don't care how much you think white people are racist, man. If the law is in their favor and they can throw your tail in jail, then you need to you need to do what you need to do to stay away from it. Whatever you need to do. Whatever it takes. That means if you get stopped for a traffic ticket, don't fight with the cops. If you want to do an argument, you do it in court. You don't fight with the cops on the street. It's stupid. And you don't teach your sons to do it either, or your daughters. It's crazy stuff. And that's why I think Nicki Minaj and many of these other artists are irresponsible. Because they can get out of the things not a normal person could. And they're giving these bad examples out here. The kind of people that they hang with, the kind of logic that they spew, all of this stuff. It's just bad for black people. Bad. But you know what? It's just getting worse. That's all it is. And these people ain't going to stop. Feel for that security officer. I would definitely quit. All right. That's all I'm going to do right now. I really appreciate all of you coming by. Thanks again. This is T and peace.